Hello everyone, welcome back to our tutorial where we take a look at the Spring Boot with Angular. In the previous videos we have created our integration tests and we have tried out all of our methods that we have for the vehicle. We have been trying how to save the vehicle, create it, update it, uh, delete it, all of that nice things. And we have been doing that with our uh, integration test. So we have been doing it in the back end. There was no front end. As you can see here already, I have some front end. That is something that we are going to be taking a look at in this video. So for the front end part of this tutorial, I will try to always do it up front and then just guide you guys through it instead of uh, typing it out. It's just so that we can save a bit of time Otherwise, um, taking a look at all of the HTML and doing that, it will t just take some time and it would be uh, a bit longer than expected. All of the code is uploaded to um, GitHub, so you will definitely be able to see it there. And I will guide you through it, through all of the steps that I did and will try to explain it why I did it like that. Okay, so let's take a look uh, at the things that we have here. You can see that we have um, a page where we are at the slash vehicles route. So we have this vehicles route, we have uh, this one, which is empty. This would be something like our homepage. And here we have a link for the vehicle. So if we click here, it opens this component here. Here we have an option to create some vehicles. So we can enter the vehicle number, submit it, and it would create it in the database. And also here we list all of our vehicles that we have in our database and we can delete them. So we have an option to delete them. So let's see how we implemented that. You might see that I have some nice styling here. That's uh, something that comes from Bootstrap. So Bootstrap provides you with an option to um, use the existing CSS classes that they have. And to do that, we have to install it. So if you take a look at what I have here, I have ran the npm install bootstrap, which would install the bootstrap uh, in our application. And I will also I was also running npm install jQuery. That's something that you need uh, for bootstrap. So if we go back to IntelliJ and we go to Git and we can see the files that we changed. Once you run the npm install bootstrap, and uh, jQuery, you need to update the Angular JSON file. So in the Angular JSON, in the styles, you need to add the path to the Bootstrap um, minimized CSS file, which will be on this location. So it would be in the Node modules, Node modules, and you also have to update the script. So you need to add jQuery script, and you also need to add the Bootstrap script. And once you have done that, yeah, everything should be nice and easy. Uh, to run it, you can do it from the terminal, uh, from the VS code. That would be one way. So those commands that I showed you here. So npm install bootstrap and npm install jQuery. Uh, one more command that you should remember is also ng generate and then a component and a name. For example, I can type it out here just to show you. So here, this command, when run from the terminal, would create you a component named blah blah. Uh, this is important because this is what I used to create the vehicle component and same as with the menu component. So just remember that. So let's go back to IntelliJ and see what we have changed here. Uh, you can see that I have some changes on the index HTML. It's just an empty line, so I can revert this. We don't need that. Um, we have um, the package JSON are the important ones. You can see here that we have the bootstrap and jQuery and same in the uh, package log JSON. So this is something that will automatically come when you run the, uh, the, those install commands for bootstrap. Okay, so uh, let's look at uh, some other things before we go to the menu component and to the vehicle component. So in the uh, app module, uh, these things here will uh, update automatically once you create the menu and the vehicle component, but you need to add reactive forms module because we will have some forms in the vehicle component. So you have to import that. You can see that you can get it from the Angular forms. And if we also take a look at the app routing module, here is where we add the routes. Once you have the vehicle component, uh, you can add the path vehicles. So this will be the path that we have here, localhost 4200 slash vehicles. 
and then you open this page. So it opens the component that you have. So whatever you have in the component, it will be shown here. Okay, great. So if we have more components, you can add them here. Now let's take a look at our uh, app components. So like our base here, you can see that I added the app menu. So now is the time when you want to run, when you want to create the menu component. So use the ng generate component menu. So you don't need the app part and uh, it will create you the menu component. So let's go back to the VS code and we can uh, see it a bit more nicely there. Uh, so once the menu component is created, it will be in this menu folders folder and it will also update the, the app module and will add a declaration for it. So this is something that you don't have to do on your own. And once it is created, you can go to the app component. So uh, let me just find it. So it's app component HTML and you can add this selector here so that the menu is included in all of our uh, paths and uh, menu component HTML is this this will the code will be available so you can also see it you can basically do whatever you want here it's just a navigation so we just want to have uh, this is the important part we want to have a link to the slash vehicles uh, path so this is where you can see all of the nice things for vehicles with that being done um, we want to create the vehicle component again do the same thing ng generate component vehicle and this will create you a vehicle component so you will have the css file html html file the spec file where the the unit test for the vehicle would be and you would have the vehicle component itself and this one you will not be including in any of html this is something that's done via the app routing module so when you go on this path vehicles you will open the component named vehicle component and the path is defined in the uh, in the menu component HTML. So here, so this must match the path that you put there. Great. And keep in mind that these paths do not have anything to do with the backend paths that we have. So far, so good. Now let's take a look at our vehicle component HTML. What do we have here? So in the HTML, we have a container, like a big div where we contain all of it. And we have two rows. We have one row here, one row here, and here we have just a divider in between them. In the first row, we have a column where we are um, placing a form that's used to create our vehicle. The forms in Angular are candled um, with, let me actually close all of these files that we do not need. The forms are handled with this form group. And if you go to the vehicle component TS, you can see that we have this vehicle form. So it's a new form group with the form control number. For the form control, uh, you can add some validations and stuff like that, which we still didn't do. So this is something that will be handy in the future. And to be able to use these forms, you have to go to the app module and add this reactive forms module. So uh, keep in mind that you need this. Just take a look at the last commit that I will have uh, for this video. So you can just take a look at the code, what I exactly changed. Great. And uh, in this form group, you can see that we have um, one um, property. So this vehicle number, and we have a submit button. So the submit button would trigger this. So it's a method on submit, which is contained in the vehicle component. And it is here. All it does is um, just console log something, but we don't actually need this. We can get rid of that. And we use the HTTP, which is the HTTP client uh, provided in the constructor to make a post request on the slash API slash vehicle endpoints, which is something we defined in the previous tutorial. And we pass in this uh, vehicle form. Here also we subscribe to the response of this uh, HTTP request that's being made and the response in the response we get a, a vehicle. This is something we defined in our uh, backend and you can see that we just console log it. You might ask yourself what this uh, vehicle is. So it's just the class I created, uh, which contains all of the properties uh, as the one that we have in our backend. So it's in the in the models. Uh, folder which I created also and vehicle.model.ts um, and we just exporting a class vehicle so it's nothing special it's just so that we can put a good type on all of these uh, methods we make okay great 
so let's go back to the HTML and see what we have here um, with the form. Yeah, that's everything with the button and nothing special. Then in the bottom, we have a table here, which is uh, just listing all of the vehicles. So we are uh, having couple of headers like an ID number created modified and we also have this special column called delete and in the body we are iterating over an array called vehicles and for every row that we have here uh, we are uh, just listing our uh, vehicle properties like ID number created and modified and in the last column we have the delete option which calls on click, it calls some method with a vehicle ID. So we'll take a look at that. So let's go back to the component. And in, in the component, we have the following array, which is just some vehicles. It's at the beginning, it's empty, but you can see in the constructor, we are making a call. So an HTTP get on the API vehicles list endpoint, which you can all see all of these endpoints if you go back to IntelliJ to, the, to our backend um, um, module and inside of Java in the controller, you can see that we have uh, you know, a vehicle controller with the API vehicles, but uh, let me just zoom in a bit. And in the abstract controller, you have all of these methods, like for example, the save, which we saw, it returns a DTO here. Um, the get mapping with just with the ID gets gets you also the DTO. The list will get you a list of DTOs and the delete mapping on the, um, ID endpoint will return you a boolean. So that's something that we can also see. So the list one, you can see that it returns an array of vehicles. And in our subscription, we are just logging that response and we are setting this array uh, here. So that's why you can see all of the vehicles listed here because in the HTML, we are iterating over it. Great. Now uh, let's take a look at the delete method. So here we can see that we have this one button, which when clicked will call a delete method with the vehicle ID. So this is this one. And whenever you click it, it will just uh, call, uh, oops, sorry. It will just call the delete method, which is again in the vehicle component uh, here. And it takes in a vehicle ID, which is a number and calls the HTTP delete on this uh, endpoint with the uh, ID. And we again subscribe to the response and just log which of the vehicles we, we deleted and if the deletion was successful or not. Great. So with that, this is basically everything. We can just take a look at how it works. So I have already started my application. Uh, so the backend is running. You can see that it's uh, running here. And the front end, I started it here. You have this npm scripts. You can just execute uh, the start one here. Of course, you can also take a look if I can see it. It's just npm run start and it runs the ng serve with the proxy that we created before so that you can proxy some calls to the backend. So let's see how our application runs. You can see that here I have uh, the console output. So if I refresh this, we should see the initial actually in the network tab. Uh, we should see the initial one, uh, made, so initial call made to the vehicle endpoints. Uh, wait, it's not that one. Uh, let me refresh it again. It should be on the API. Uh, API hello. Yeah, it's a message that we make and we have a list endpoint, which in the response, you can see that we get an array of vehicles. This is something that we use to show them here. Great. Now let's see what else do we have. Um, if we would try to create a new vehicle, let's see how we can do that. Let's uh, 99999 whatever. Click submit. And we should now have seen, yeah, we see a message created vehicle uh, with an ID 99999. And in the network tab, we can also see that there was a call made to the uh, vehicles endpoint. So it was uh, in the headers, you can see that it was a post request and it was finished okay and this is the data that we sent so this is actually the response that we got back and this is the request payload so this is what we said we just send a number and the backend take care takes care of everything else you can see that here for example this doesn't get cleared this is one thing that we want to do um, we want to fix that and you can see that the table was not automatically updated if we refresh the page the table will update but we don't want to um, have a application that's 
so bad that doesn't update the table. So this is something that we will be taking care of in the next videos. So we are going to implement the WebSocket so that we can uh, subscribe to some messages and update our tables automatically. This is something that will be nice. So the listing works, you can see it. Uh, let's see if we can delete it. So if I click here, uh, again, the table doesn't update. That's something that we'll be fixing later on. And you can see that we have a call to the API vehicle nine endpoint, uh, which returns true. And if we refresh our table, this vehicle is gone. So we have deleted it. So again, if I click this one, refresh, gone, deleted, I can refresh as much as I want and the vehicles will not be uh, appearing again. So that is everything for this video I wanted to show you. Hopefully you were able to follow it and you like this uh, format, how we're going to handle the front end changes. If you don't like it or something is uh, not good, just let me know and I will try to explain you um, why I'm doing this in more detail. Or if something just doesn't work, we can always change it. So it, it doesn't really, uh, it's not fixed. Um, so the application, the front end part, we're going to take care more about it. We're going to introduce some new components, um, some validation, maybe these automatic updates. What is, this is something that we're going to be doing in the next video. So yeah, stick with me. And if you have any things that you want to see, just let me know. And I will try to do them in one of the following videos. So if you like this, hopefully uh, you do do like the video and subscribe to my channel. This will um, really uh, help me out and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.